Hi there again, and um, welcome back to this series of videos on overhead meshes. So let's continue with the with flowing overhead meshes and fluid. So in the previous case, we run using two component meshes. In this one, we're going to run three component meshes. You will see that it's pretty much the same, but I want to show you some other advanced features. So let's launch Fluent again. Remember, we're taking the same match from Nappenfeld. So in this case, it will be 3D. Remember, it's advisable uh, to use double precision. And well, feel free to use as many processors as you want. In this case, I will use two. So in the link below, you will find, uh, in the description, you will, you, you, you will find a link to download the cases. So pretty much we have one, one additional case. Also, you have the case already set up to run as you get lost. And again, you need a license to Fluent, so you can get the academic, and if you need the commercial one, you can contact our partner in the description. You you, you have the address, so you can get access at very competitive prices. So let's go and read the case. So as you saw, we need to read first the meshes. So I will go here, file, read mesh. Okay, three component meshes. So I know the first one, usually it's a good idea also the first one to have the background mesh or the one we think it is a background mesh. I know in this case it's all, so you get it. Okay, so we read the mesh, we can visualize the mesh. So as you saw, we have front and back plane, so I will just plot the back plane and see that we have a uniform background mesh. And now let's read the other component meshes. So remember that to append new meshes, you go here and sounds append, and you go cases. So I will add refinements on. Okay. I can add back one. So see the new one as they have exactly the same name, automatically flowing is just appending this dot one. You have there the refinement sound, and then we can add the new one, and you keep and you can keep adding according to the number of measures that you have. So as you see, it's very easy. We have it here, and we have the new one back dot one one, and the same for the domain. So dash one will be the original one, dash one one will be the refinement, and, da and dash one 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 will be the cylinder, the one that we're reading. So this is what we have at this point. We need to create the overset mesh, the whole set. So before doing that, let's set up the case. Okay, I, why, I'm not going to run, but just to show you a few iterations. You can run it later at, your, at home. So general, so we have transient, okay. We go to models. Remember, you set up all here, your, here all your, your models. So nothing to set up here, materials. Okay, let's change air properties. So density one zero point zero one. So as we have it in OpenFan, cell sun, we don't need to set up something anything here. So remember there you set up like sources and stuff like that. And then we go to the important one boundary conditions. Okay, so here uh fluent is just setting some default values that maybe we need, we need to change and remember also here we need to set up the overset boundary condition the one that will enable the interface creation see that here we, we cannot create that overset interface so i would reorder a little bit here some type and let's do some renaming so back let's put symmetry okay then back one symmetry as well. So let me do this. So this also can be done automatically. So for instance, if I would recall, you can copy and I want to copy that into the bottom. Oh, okay. I want to copy from back. Okay. To bundle this. Okay. Well, let's do it manually. I don't recall how to use that one. So symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. Okay. So you are creating, we're creating the patches. Top and bottom also. You have it there. Top 
Okay. Then see there is a wall, the inlet, I want velocity inlet there. And let's let's give the value one. Then the outlet will be where do I have outlet? Here will be pressure outlet. Okay, so we have one wall, we have all the symmetries. Uh, and one inlet, and now we need to set up the overset patch. So you have this one. So the moment we set up this one, you will see that the overset interface is available, and we can do it also for that one. So we have two overset patches, remember. So let's visualize that. Okay, so these two. And this is what we have. We have one overset patch, which will be that. Okay, the refinement done, and then you have the other one around the cylinder. Okay, so we set up both patches as overset patches, and now we're ready to create the overset interface. So we give it a name. So background sun here usually will be the first one that you are reading, and then you choose the component sounds okay we put both there component sounds create and at this point we have the interface you will have it available here and then if you type here list okay you will see background component and component the name of the sound and the id and priority we're going to talk about priority okay this is the great priority to do interpolation can be similar to what we have in open phone with the sound's ID in integer. So we're going to see the influence of this priority on your overset mesh. Then reference value, let's set up this one. So let me compute for you. And I know this one is to the area, reference area. Put this two, and nothing else we need to set up here. Then methods, let's use the default methods, okay? Then controls also, let's use the full values. And let's create also a monitor. Okay. So I will go all reports definition and I will create force report. I will create just for drag. You can do the same for life and moment if you want. Okay, so we have the case set up. Everything ready. So at this point, what we need to do, remember to compute the overset mesh, we need to initialize. Okay, at this point, we go, we initialize for an inlet. And see, pay attention to the message that we're having. So we have an overset interface, we create it, we have the sounds and everything, but look at that. Now we have this warning. Remember, this is a warning, it's not an error. You will be able to run by telling you that you have off orphan cells. Orphan cells are those cells that you have in the interpolation fridge, but they don't have they don't have any donor. Okay, they don't know from where from where to get information. So Fluent will deal with that. But however, it's better to have the mesh with no orphan cells. So let's visualize those cells. So we go here, contour. Okay, we choose there. Cell type, and then we have our set cell type. And I want, I don't want to see no values. So we have here. So remember, at the beginning, a fluent will only show you the cell cells, okay, one, and then the donor cells two. But we want to see the the rest of the cells. To see all those cells. We need to go to advanced auctions. So remember in the text user interface, you will have those actions. So we go to the file. So we don't need to write the whole word, just the two first one. If the if it is the only one, it will automatically select it. So define. And then I know that I have overset auction here. So see overset. So over. I enter here and I can access all, all the auctions here. So we go auctions. So I have this one expert will give me access to more advanced functions. So we're now enable that one, but also I want to increase the verbosity. So put it to two. So we're going to get more information when we, we do some tests. 
and also to see the res, the resectors. Let's say there is this option, render resector. So type render. Yes. And now let's display again. And now we have that information. Okay, so in this case, minus two are the holes that are automatically cut by the by the sol by the solver. Then minus one represent all the orphan cells. So see that all these cells are orphan. So those cells they don't know from get from, from where to get information. Zero is receptors, two donors, and one would be everything. So see that this represents a problem, but Fluent will deal with that, but it's not ideal to have those orphan cells. Okay. So to solve that problem, everything can be done here at the level of the text user interface. So let's go back to the level. And here we have, for instance, you have the auction list. And this one will show you a diagnostic of everything or your cell zone. So you can have that information here. Okay. And if you type check, it will check and will tell you all the orphan cells. It will give you all the information location. Okay. So what we want to do to solve this problem, okay, there are two ways. Okay. One way will be change the minimization. So remember that here we're mini minimizing the, the over the overlap. So let's go and let's change that minimize overlap. I don't want to use minimize overlap. Initialize and see that we don't have any more the message here about the orphan cells. So if we displace now, we have a perfect mesh. Okay, very similar as you recall the one from from open forms. You compare, you will see very similar. So you have all your donors, receptors, and <coughs> and soul cells, and you can go level by level. Okay. So probably this is one of the advantages of using this, this kind of uh, the meta algorithm where we don't minimize the overlap. Okay, it is more robust, it's less likely problem that you will get those old orphan cells. Okay. So let's enable again that option. And if we initialize, you have your warning here. Okay, so how do we solve that one? So we need to play in this case with the grid priorities. So I go back one level and see that here you have the option grid priorities. Grid. I want to apply it to that interface. And then you start to give grid priorities level by level. So my background will be zero and then the component one and this one put it also in the same level. Okay, or you can put it in two as well as one. So let's do like this zero, one, two. But the important here is that the background and the others need to have different priorities. Now I will initialize and see that now the problem is gone. Display. And this is what we have, okay? A very nice interface. So we could all, we cut all these cells here. So we're saving computational resources. You have here all your donors, receptors. And you can explore level by level. Okay. So this is how we work, how we access this advanced uh, option. So it's very important to, for you to know that you have that those options there and check always the quality of, of those orphan cells. So for instance, let's do it again, grid. Okay, so that one, I want this one zero, and let's put that one, these two in the same level. And you will see that we'll get the same, <coughs> the same mesh, okay? So that we don't have any more the overset, the orphan cells. And we go here, we have a war cell. So it might be a slight different, but we sort of sorted out that, that problem. We don't have that problem anymore. Okay. So see that now this is what we have in this level, okay? So we have everything here, okay? Remember the other one was really the mean, it was very, it was minimized here. We have the whole, so different grid priorities will give you different interpolation 
Methods. Okay, at this point we're ready to run, so let's go, let's initialize. Uh, we have it initialized, we have everything method set up. So I will run just a few times there just to show you that there is no problem. So let's choose the same time step as in open form, which I was this one. And let's do just 10 iterations. And we will calculate, and it will go and iterate the same way as in open form. As all well as in open form, you, see, you have this jump here in your forces. Okay, so you can change that. Here, let's go monitors and report plots, emissions, access. Let's go. Okay, and you can run form. So you just adjust your axis. So you run the same way, okay? Nothing turns here. And you let it run 150 seconds or 300 seconds until you, you have the onset and you can compute enough uh, statistics. So the visualization, you can come back here. So we have an initial field already. So you have this old type here. You go velocity. Okay, so we can explore level by level. So background, we have all this information there. Then back one, we have all this information here. And around the body, we have all this information here. Okay. So remember, if you go to some other uh, external, uh, or even here, remember, sometimes they, they, the, the different component measures will overlap. So sometimes a good idea to put one in front of the other just to shift, to translate there a little bit avoid those problems. So let's run also a few iterations. So let's do in the option, you will see that nothing, nothing changed. Minimize and let me put here now. Initialize. Okay. We compute the overset patch everything. So you will see that now what we have in back one. So we have that back ladder patch. Okay. Uh, or set. Okay. So we have all these cells. Previously, everything was cut. Okay. So this is the one that is as close as possible to the one that we have in open front. So to run, nothing changed. Okay. And what is interesting here that here, we don't have the orphan cells, so the uh, degree priority is not important, but leave it in that way, as you see, it is okay. And let's run a couple of iterations as well. So calculate, uh, create now, overwrite, yes. So that is to overwrite the previous files. And we start to iterate in the same way, see nothing change. So probably minimizing will be a little bit more faster because you have less cells. But Probably this one will be all this one also have some advantage when it comes to those over oversets. The orphan cells, so it's up to you to see which one is the best one. But honestly, I prefer to use the, the minimization, enable the minimization. Okay, so let's visualize a little bit what we have here. And again, we have our results here. So see here that you can see the over that the overlap that is over overlapping the different surfaces. So this is here, you will need to do this in a pro shift one in front of the other to avoid that problem and just visualize the, the patch that you, you're interested in. Okay, well, thank you very much for your attention. And in the next video, we're going to work again with the cylinder, but we're going to put it into motion. It will be pretty much the same, we present the same way, but now we need to program a little bit in open for a UDF Okay, so we are going to do that one and run a few times to see how things are moving. Also, we can test the kinematic is in open phone, so we're going to, to work with that. So thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye.